I don't even know what to say. Like, what do I want to Okay, all right, so. She, what are you getting? I'm getting a wax and tint. Okay, we're mm -hmm. doing a wax and tint on my girl, Cheryl. All <laughs> right. Okay. Time to get these bushy eyebrows under control. They're so beautiful, though. <gasps> Okay, so we have to clean. Mm -hmm. Always clean and exfoliate first. You don't want to work on a dirty canvas. Yeah. Not that your brows are dirty. I'm Everyone's dirty. brows are dirty. Everyone mm. can, even if you come in with a clean face, there's always something to be wiped away. Mm. You just want to really get in there and get all that dead skin. Yeah. Also, just like if you have like sunscreen or something, I imagine. Yes, any so, like, barrier anything. between mm -hmm. the brows, the skin. You want to remove it. Can't really see. I'm trying to zoom in on it, but you get the picture. Are you wearing sunscreen? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. I am not. <laughs> She's just, I was like, yeah, so I'm so greasy right now because mm -hmm. sunscreen. So I am inking up my mapping string. I'm going to map her first, but I do a half map when I'm tinting. If I'm going to wax after. Mm. When you're doing brows it really doesn't matter if you wax first or if you tint first if you're an experienced brow tech because if you're not and you don't do a clean tint you want to tint first because that tint can irritate broken skin mm, okay that's good to know mm -hmm. my map so one half I'm marking all my points of intersection and then I'm going to measure to match on the other side Turn your head this way. See how pretty. <laughs> Basically, any points that I made on this side, I'm measuring so that they are the same on the other. So that we create two symmetrical brows. You don't always map for symmetry, but we're mapping for symmetry today because her brows are very naturally symmetrical, so we're gonna bring them to symmetry. Yes. What? They are. they are cousins. Why are you lying to me? That's not true. They're fraternal twins. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So all the points are marked out on both sides. And this is what I mean by a half map. I'm not going to draw the connecting lines over and under. Sometimes I do if the shape is really hard to see and I don't wanna guess, but I can see the shape here easily and I'm gonna start filling them in. So I'm gonna mix up my tint. Hmm. Can I use stain on you? Yeah. I'm actually going to use stain on her. It lasts longer, but it is a hybrid of tint and henna, so you have to make sure your client is not allergic to henna. You can't just wing it and use it on them. I've done it all on her before, so I know that she's not allergic. Just looking for my 
favorite color, which is going to be the last bottle that I grab, of course. Here it is. I'm going to use Perfecto Brown. Oh god, it's just not going to zoom in for me. There you go. Perfecto Brown. Close enough. It's from Brow Code. You can mix colors with stain, but she doesn't need that. And the ratio that I use is still 50-50, just like tint, so I use four drops like that. I know some of this is fuzzy. It just is what it is. I'm still not sure how to use it. cinematic mode on the phone. <laughs> Whatever. At least my problems right now. Yeah, you'll be fine. 50-50 looks like that. And mix it. Would you ever put more if, if your client is like, hey, I want them to be super dark? I would just do a darker color. Okay. Yeah. With henna, you can layer. Okay. Um, you can add another layer on top when you feel like it's done processing and it'll soak deeper henna into the skin. Okay. But with the stain, it's really not going to make much of a difference. So I'm gonna use this tiny little flat brush, which I love, and these were from Amazon. Raffaello is the brand. Let me see if I can lower your head more. No. And I will raise this. I'm gonna turn this. And turn your head this way. I want to make sure it's not um, fuzzy. That's better. Okay. And imagine like an imaginary line connecting these three dots on the bottom. And I just start building it straight across. You could also just come here once a week and I'll just keep doing <laughs> your brows. <laughs> um, Honestly, yeah. For my YouTube videos. In other videos, I'm probably gonna be voicing it over because I don't know if I can talk out loud like this the entire time with my client. I think I'll- Why not? I don't know, I get like embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. You're literally teaching me skills and like I <laughs> did not know I don't know how to do any of this, honestly. So I'm learning. <laughs> and if you guys see a tear falling on my cheek, she's not hurting me. I just, when I, my face is weird for me. <laughs> oh, after I wax you? Or just in well, general? Well, just in general, yeah. I feel like it's always like, I don't know, I just start tearing. But it's, I'm not in pain. I'm just weird. No, don't say that. So... I just start building the shape around. I'm gonna come up to that top marking that I made. I'm just building the color up. And how long does the stain usually last like compared to a regular tint? Tint lasts up to a week. Okay. Stain lasts up to two weeks. Cool. And up to four weeks on the hairs. Just the thing is no one cares about how long it's gonna Mm -hmm. Last on the hairs. They want it for that stain on their skin. Mm -hmm. So up to two weeks, you can't scrub it yeah, really and I, harshly. And and I guess it depends, like, if you have, like, oily skin, right? Like It does. It depends on if you're oily. Mm. It depends on it, what kind of um, skin regimen you're on. So mm. it really differs person to person. That's why it's up to, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some people I see after a month that I can still see the outline of their tint yeah. in their skin and i'm like what are you doing maybe you're not washing your face up. <laughs> <laughs> so i built the shape around and i'm just gonna make sure everything's filled in and you see how i kind of cut across the top and left that fade in the front and i'm gonna blend that 
ombre fade in the front even more in a minute i'll show you so then turn to this side mm -hmm. we haven't cleaned or anything yet You just have such a great core shape to follow along with. That that makes me feel good because I think my eyebrows are a mess. Oh my god. Of course you do. That is something you would think. Mm -hmm. Beautiful eyebrows. So, you have to trust your map. And if you left a dot there, it was for a reason. So don't start going off plan. And being like, I think I'm going to go a little higher or lower because that's not why you drew the map. You drew the map to be confident about where you went. Like on that side, I could have been like, hmm, should I go up that high? It looks a little high. But this is exactly where her arch hits on this side and we're bringing them to symmetry. So trust the map that you just drew because you used math to get there. And just your thing oh, sorry I moved okay and if your client moves make sure you slap them <laughs> <laughs> any areas that you feel like your line isn't super crispy that's okay I'm gonna clean them up after I use these. I love them. And rose water. Oh, I almost dripped it on you. What if someone comes to you and is like, hey, I want a 90s brow. Like, give me like super thin brows, but I want them mapped. Like, would you commit a crime like that? I've gotten clients that have asked me for that before, mm -hmm. but I usually talk them out of it. <laughs> no one has asked me for anything super extreme, but um, mm -hmm. the ones that are like, can we go thinner? Can we go thinner? I'm like, contemplate your life. Yeah. <laughs> Think about this as thoroughly. Do you really want this? Yes. And I'll say, let's go a little thinner and we'll work our way down from there. How about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have had clients that came in for a tattoo and had me um, tattoo their brow like very straight out from their oh my actual goodness. shape because it's a it's very on trend right now. Mm -hmm. They call it the foxy brow, like mm -hmm. the Kendall Jenner. Yeah. So I just wanted to build an arch up a little more. So you can use these, and the other thing that I like to use is my flat brush, but I'm getting a different one. I have a very tiny, tiny one, and with rose water, you can go right along your edge and clean super, super crispy lines. pretty neat. Okay. 
around here. And how long would you say that the stain is actually staying on the eyebrows? Like 10 minutes is definitely long enough. Okay. Um, you can wipe it off in sections if you want. Okay. I feel like if you're impatient and okay. you're the type to wipe it off too soon, mm -hmm. then to do what I'm doing first because then you let it sit on here and you still have to wax. Yeah. You're forced to leave it through the wax, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Cheryl has just been through so much with me. Like, you went on my first <laughs> live. <laughs> Honestly, I love it. It's fun. I know, but I'm not doing TikTok lives anymore. They're mean. Oh, my God. You stopped? Really? Yes. I'm a baby. That's why. I can't take it. <laughs> it just distracts. Well, people just, like, like to, like, be rude. Like I know, but it distracts from the it art and yeah. the learning of it. When people are, like, hurling insults at my clients yeah. and... So, the last part you can do to kind of blend that ombre fade in the front. You see how I left it? I just take some rose water on my flat brush, and I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. If you feel more comfortable using white paste, you can use white paste. If you guys want me to use white paste in a video, I will. It just can get messy. You have to use it very sparingly and you have to be almost more precise than just freehanding it. Because if not, the white paste will act as a barrier between the skin and the tint. And when you pull your tint away, you'll have missing gaps oh wow yeah okay. but i think it's a mental thing because mm -hmm. people feel more safe like just knowing the white paste is there than just freehanding it even though it's probably a little harder to use white paste yeah but yeah when you take it off though there's like a bunch of crooked lines mm -hmm. like squiggly lines which yes and here i can see everything that i'm doing yeah right so let me just show you guys Pretty this looks. And I'm gonna wax her, so I'm raising it up a little bit. I'm just drying her skin because I was wiping it clean before. Okay, time to wax. Get right up on the line of the tint or whatever it is that you have on your client. Get yourself a little tab and always have one side working while the other side is drying. Save yourself time. Don't sit there and stare at this one waiting for it to dry. Turn your head towards me. Nice. 
Oh, that was so good. I'm like, ah, oh, clean. <laughs> <laughs> you could feel the clean. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do one more clean up strip on her. And then after that, whatever's left has to be tweezed. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. It felt good. It feels like literally fresh air. <laughs> like you can feel the fresh air blowing yeah. through your brows now. <laughs> that one doesn't need a second bottom strip. I will clean that up with tweezers after. If it's enough that you can just grab with your tweezers, don't put the skin through a second uh, strip. Uh. That's why I didn't do a full strip on her here, even though she has a couple little hairs there. I'll get them with the tweezer after. I don't know if other people would agree with me, but I feel mm -hmm. like pulling the top strip feels good. It feels great. Like, it just feels <laughs> so satisfying and clean. <laughs> but people don't usually feel that way about the underneath. Yeah, underneath sucks, but the top feels good. <laughs> It's just closer to your eye. You know? It's just yeah. like more sensitive. If I look back at this video and my head is blocking the camera <laughs> for this, I'm going to be so annoyed. You have barely any hair in the middle here. Yeah. And this is why it's good to like lay your tint first because if I hadn't have tinted you first, mm -hmm. I would have definitely wiped your tint off by now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because I'm just impatient. Yeah. It There is a point where it stops, it just stops processing, yeah. you know? So it's not really doing anything by... So annoying. It's not really doing anything by just sitting there. Mm -hmm. If it gets like this, oh, okay. okay. So it just like it doesn't continue to darken no, it. it oh. stops processing after an amount of time. Gotcha. If you can't get your tab up, do that. Grab your stick that's still tacky and pick up the end. Don't like pick under your client's skin. I was struggling there for a second. Okay. And then I'm gonna start with her tent. When it gets pretty dry like this. You can use some rose water on a cotton ball or water. I just think rose water adds like a little spa quality to it. Mm. And it helps neutralize the color on henna in particular. So mm. I'll press it on the cotton ball. Um, I'll press the cotton ball on the skin for a second. So you don't have to do a lot of harsh pulling to get that tint off underneath.
and don't worry if it's still inside the hair because we can brush that out. But if you do harsh rubbing on the client's brow, you could remove it off the skin. Yeah, because it's fresh though, right? So Yeah, you might pick it up mm -hmm. off the skin and why do that? Look at her tearing. Yeah. <laughs> It always happens. I tried especially hard for this. <laughs> Not to. Brush them out. Now I... This is where you're going to clean up anything. That you want to perfect. Her hair grows slightly fuller on this side than it does on this side. That's why this side looks a little darker, but that's natural, so that's fine. That doesn't mean you're going to make a darker tint on this side because then that's going to look funny. It's not going to give what you're trying to give. Some things just have to be left how they are. The brows match. Mm -hmm. That is the point here. And you probably can't even notice it and you're a perfectionist who notices the slightest thing so well yeah but also people notice too they're like don't you think it's a little dark here and i'm like yeah it's your hair yeah <laughs> these little hairs up underneath that i want gone okay and then we're gonna do a little highlight underneath because it just makes everything look so clean those people in their videos who do their highlights so clean in one little swoop and then it's done I'm not that person I mm. do mine so messy and then so I blend it with a brush after well everyone has their technique so whatever I've come to terms with the fact that I, I can't do perfect. a clean highlight <laughs> line. he just looks so pretty You extend past the front and the ends of the brows a little and it gives the illusion of like a longer brow. Blend with a fluffy brush. And then I always leave a tint extender on top. That's my choice. You don't have to do that. I think it makes the brows look a little glossy. I don't like leaving brow gel on them. Mm -hmm. Especially when they get tinted because the client has to leave them dry for 24 hours and that can look really nasty gel mm. on their brows after mm. a certain amount of time. Mm. Oh, and trimming. I usually never trim her brows because I like them fluffy. This brow is a little wild, so the tiniest bit. I'm not going to brush them up like this and cut across it's gonna look crazy just maybe the long ones that end up looking like flyaways i'm gonna trim but that's it if you don't feel confident doing that then do it while you have the map drawn or while the tint is on there so you can really see but i have her tint on here as a guide anyway right mm. but just the tiniest little trim i hate how trimmed brows look Obviously, it's not yeah. about me. It's what the client wants. But I always manage to talk the client into it, too. And when they see, like, <laughs> that I don't trim. Or I do, like, a, mm -hmm. like a gentle trim. Mm -hmm. So they this, yeah. So this, t you said this is a tint extender? Yeah. So this helps the tint set and oh. makes it last longer. Have I used this? I know I've used it on you before, but maybe yeah, I Yeah, probably. Yeah. Tell me what it was. Yeah. Maybe you felt like it worked. That's why maybe I came back and was like, Sam, my eyebrows have been on for two months. 
Oh my god, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, so much easier. Instead, oh. clients are like, "Do you have anything that lasts longer?" I'm like, a tattoo. That's all I got. It's just it's your face. It's your you know you produce natural oils like can't expect it to last a long time. Right, like how deep in your skin do you yeah. think this episode? But anyway, there you go. There's the finished product. Yay. I'm going to take this out of here. Oh. Look how pretty. She's going to leave these dry for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. She's going to live her best life. Best life. Can't wait for the weekend. Thanks, guys. Like and subscribe. Bye.